I'm an optimist. I think enormous uh, improvements are possible for our publics, the people we serve, but only if uh, leaders embrace the um, very, very difficult transitions that are necessary to modernize. Uh, one out of seven dollars in the American economy gets absorbed by health care. It means two things. One is that it's, um, it's, a, it's a massive problem to change it. Turning the Queen Mary is easy compared to taking this, this immense ship of uh, technology and moving it toward the needs of chronic illness and prevention in communities. A very hard problem. Uh, and the second part of the problem is economic, which is $2.7 trillion is a ton. Now, we're at 17% of our GDP. Britain's at, what, 10 and a half maybe? Uh, not quite the same proportion, but you can sense here in this country the urgency that's felt. Why is that? It's because, um, it's because there are other uses for the money. Uh, in my state of Massachusetts, not a single area of public investment has increased in real terms in 10 years except health care. In America, the enterprise of building the new bridge, if you'll follow my metaphor, has fallen dead center into the worst episode of political polarization in the memory. I don't know the political environment here as well. There's, a, there's, a, there's an undercurrent of civility and, uh, <laughs> that I still believe in. Uh, anyway, you, you talk well. Uh, so perhaps you discuss well. I don't know, but I'll tell you it's tough. Uh, the in English NHS or the UK as a whole, economic pressure, uh, debt and deficit affecting healthcare, healthcare being questioned in terms of the amount of social opportunity it's taking compared to other public and private sector investments. Uh, the public, in your case, looking at its tax bill and wondering if it's getting value for what it's being charged. And uh, loss of real conversation in the face of headline news and uh, rhetoric that uh, may not bear a lot of relationship to the, to the complexity of, of, of reality. A confused public wondering what's going to be lost, and a profession who doesn't know which way to go is worried. If you want to make something better, you have to decide to do it. You have to have a what. That is, you're going to need to decide to improve. Improvement's not automatic. Entropy is automatic. Decay is automatic. To reorganize and be able to grow takes uh, intention. So there's a what to improvement, rule one. Then you better have a how. I mean, yelling at yourself as the tennis ball goes the wrong place or throwing your souffle out and, and just screaming that it's bad souffle, it doesn't help. You need to change something. You're going to need a way to change the recipe. There's a myth about, I think, that the, the root science of healthcare improvement, anyway, is economics. You know, set the carrots and sticks appropriately, put in the correct contingencies, and all will be well. I, I guess most people believe that. I do not. Uh, I think that perhaps a proper structure of incentives sets the stage for improvement, but that would work no, no more than teaching a child to play the pathetique sonata on the piano by giving him cookies when it goes well and, and uh, hitting him uh, across the head when it doesn't. That would, be a, that would be a very depressed child. He would cry. <laughs> he definitely would not play the pathetique sonata. You have to teach him how to, how to play the piano. And that's the nature of improvement to me. It's a learning process. By my colleagues uh, Tom Nolan and John Whittington in 2008, they came up with the idea that when you're thinking about improving a large healthcare system, maybe a hospital, but certainly a nation, three goals are to be pursued at once in order to serve society. They call this the triple aim. The triple aim is first, better care, safer care, more patient centered care. Better, better, uh, more care, more aligned with science, more equitable care, uh, more timely care. But say Nolan and Whittington, wait a minute. Why did you have your heart attack? Why do you break your arm? Why are you depressed? Why do you have lung cancer? And the answer is not that you didn't get health care. Health care is, is is after the horse left the barn. It's the fix it shop. But the causal system lies outside health care. It lies in society. 400% more than in healthcare. That's actually a number, that, that if you take the variance in health status and you attribute it to different causes, say 100 points of health variation, 50 will be genes, not yet that alterable. The, these 50% over, 50 more points, well, 10 are healthcare and 40 are the rest of the causes. So healthcare is one fourth as powerful as everything else I could list around nutrition and activity and equity and justice and pollution and and, and stresses in life, 
And the third, per capita cost matters. Bring it down, bring it down, lower the cost. Better care, better health, lower cost. This became the mission statement at Medicare under my leadership. When I went there on day three, I showed this to the 5,000 employees there in a virtual teleconference, and I said, this is success for us. I was offered the job of heading Medicare and Medicaid and turned it down. I turned it down several times because it didn't make sense to me to, uh, to leave IHI and go there, uh, given the differences in the jobs. But then I was in the, um, the, uh, the atrium, the entrance hall to the Health and Human Services building in Washington for, to be interviewed, and I saw this uh, etched on the wall, these words from a famous American senator, Hubert Humphrey. He said, the moral test of government is how it treats those who are in the dawn of life, the children, those who are in the twilight of life, the aged, and those in the shadows of life, the sick, the needy, and the handicapped. This is 100 million. This is one out of three of my compatriots. Meeting the moral test became very important to me. Uh, I heard uh, this year, last year, a quotation. I don't know where it's from. Perhaps someone can tell me. We, we don't inherit the world from our ancestors. We're borrowing it from our children. And when I read the morning papers now, I wonder what we're handing them. I'm just showing you the orientation question. In a complex environment fraught with conflict, uncertainty, pressure, you better find your compass. Whether yours is the moral test or your grandchildren or the triple aim, I don't know. That's up to you. But you, individually, you, England, uh, me, individually, my country, better remember why or what the how makes no difference to provide a foundation that is capable of achieving better care, better health, and lower cost at the same time, unless we remember that change is the way, uh, we will be facing a very vicious environment in, in America. We will be cutting back on our safety net programs. We'll be taking money away from citizens through tax dollars or through cuts in their pay because money has to go to health care benefits. We'll be weakening the other investments we want to make with health care dollars, like teaching and research. And more than that, we're weakening the, the parts of society that could benefit from a, a, a better performing health care. We weaken museums. We weaken schools. The NHS version of this, I don't know. Uh, I think from what I've seen through the years, structural problems, your hospitals, despite this repeated attempt to give power to the primary care system, which wants to keep the patient home, your hospitals are very much under incentive to stay rather busy and to make sure that they've they have less of incentive to, to build the continuity that we need. Patient-centered care, well, we see mid-Staffordshire, uh, a dramatic example where apparently cost pressures became dominant and somebody forgot about the returning to the patient as the focus of care, or everybody forgot. Uh, and you continually restructure uh, all the time as if you can somehow find the correct number of agencies and that just isn't going to work, people. Uh, it's not the way to get there. And the, your public, I don't know. I, or do you suffer in your public from the more is better theory when that's not true or the, or the reaction to the latest headline drives, drives events instead of allowing for strategy? I don't think this is a very good time for minor experiments. Uh, it, it, we, we, it's, there's no time left in a way. I feel a sense of urgency for us that uh, going to scale is going to matter. You're, you're closer than we are, uh, beginning with your solidarity that stretches back to, to 1948, there's a window right now, and I don't know whether it's three months long, three years long, it's not 10 years long, and that is for the people who give the care to change the care. I think it's possible, could we do it, physicians, nurses, pharmacists, therapists, managers, executives, boards, leaders of care to say, you know what, it's on us, it's on us. We must do it, and we can do it, and we will do it,